Welcome to part two of the glycemic index. In the first video in the series, we discussed what the glycemic index is, why and how it was developed, and how improving the glycemic index of the foods you eat can improve your health, weight, and energy. I also shared what foods are commonly found in each one of the lists, the high, medium, and the low GI list. So if you haven't yet reviewed that video, I highly recommend that you click on the link below first. As you recall in part one, we finished by talking about how it, it's important not to just stick with the low glycemic index foods and skip all the others. First of all, you'll be missing out on some very healthy foods. Secondly, avoiding these foods are totally unnecessary. The glycemic index is not an exact science. Much of the glycemic response you get from foods depends on how much of that food you're eating, what else you're eating it with, and even specifics like how it was prepared and cooked. So, I'm Dr. Joe, PhD nutritionist, professional speaker, and author of several books, including Reboot, How to Power Up Your Energy, Focus, and Productivity. So let's get started with 17 quick tips to guide you in lowering the GI of the foods that you eat. Tip number one, don't confuse low GI with healthy. Just because chocolate and ice cream are in the low group doesn't mean that there are more nutritious choice than potatoes, carrots, or watermelon. And even though sodas and fruit juices are both medium GI, doesn't mean they have the same nutrition. Sodas have no nutritional value. Whereas fruit juices contain many of the vitamins and minerals found in their original fruit sources. Some processed foods like snack and meal bars are low labeled low glycemic, but they aren't necessarily healthy. Look at the ingredient list and you'll find that they oftentimes contain excessive amounts of processed sugars and saturated fats like palm oil. Tip two, eat adequate protein at every meal. I've mentioned how important this is for so many reasons, but here's another one. The protein slows down the absorption of the carbohydrates, so keep to the recommended 20 to 35 grams of protein at every meal. Tip three, snack healthy. The glycemic index score is more important at snack time. At meals, at least you are eating other foods that will slow down the absorption. Snacks oftentimes consist of one or maybe two foods. So instead of reaching for cookies, cakes, chips, or pretzels, reach for a low glycemic snack such as nuts, any type of nut. Or dip apples into nut butters, raw broccoli into hummus, or try the newer chips made from beans. Tip four. There's no need to eliminate all the high glycemic index foods like potatoes, rice, and desserts. Just be sure to enjoy them with a meal, not alone. But sometimes those high glycemic index foods are actually appropriate. Look at the ingredient list on sports beverages. All sugar, and for a reason. That sugar is absorbed quickly so it doesn't upset your stomach, and then the glucose goes immediately to fuel the exercising cells. Tip five, mix high GI with low GI foods. A perfect example is missing, mixing rice and beans. But in addition, think about it. If you want soda or dessert that's higher in the glycemic index, just choose a lower GI meal to match with it. Tip six, enjoy a variety of carbs. Instead of eating three portions of one type of carb, eat one portion of three different types of carbs. For example, instead of a six inch submarine sandwich, which is the equivalent of three slices of bread, high glycemic, enjoy three different types of carbs, like a slice of whole grain bread made into a half sandwich, plus a glass of milk and a piece of fruit. Not only do this, does this meal have a, a lower glycemic index, it's more nutritionally balanced. Tip seven, try lower GI vegetables. I don't know about you, but I grew up in a family where we had potatoes like every day, and I still eat potatoes. But don't be afraid to add into the mix. Try some lower GI options like sweet potatoes, winter squash, and parsnips. It turns out that baby new potatoes have a lower GI value than most of the other types of potatoes. Tip eight, choose brown rice. It's low GI, while white rice is way up there in the scale. But if you're not ready for that switch yet, choose a longer grain white rice, like basmati rice, which has a lower GI than the short, sticky varieties. And tip eight, 
eat more legumes. Most beans, or pulses as some people call it, have a lower GI. So add beans to stir fries, chilies, soups, casseroles, and even salads. And yes, it's okay to use canned beans. Big time saver. Tip 10, substitute low GI grains. Instead of always eating rice or pasta, try some of the new wholesome low GI grains like quinoa, barley, and buckwheat. Tip 11, don't over-ripen the fresh fruit. See, as fruit ripens, more of the starches turn into sugar, so it raises the GI index. So it's best to enjoy yellow-only bananas instead of those covered with black spots. Tip 12, just like over-ripening fruits increases the GI, so does overcooking of starches. So enjoy your pasta and noodles cooked al dente. Tip 13, choose whole grain bread. Instead of reaching for white or even multi-grain bread, select a bread that has as its first ingredient 100% whole grain, like 100% whole wheat. And also, authentic sourdough bread is also low in the glycemic index. When we say that, we're talking about the authentic ones, like made out in San Francisco, not the packaged white bread that says that it's sourdough. It tastes different, trust me. Tip 14, choose unrefined breakfast cereals. Rolled or steel cut oats are a better option than any of the processed cereals. Cooked millet also makes a good breakfast cereal. Tip 15, eat starchy foods cold. This is a strange one. But when you chill cooked starchy foods like pasta, rice, oats, and potatoes, it actually drops the GI. It forms some resistant starches that are naturally found in beans. So eat a cold potato salad instead of cooked potatoes. Tip 16, modify your favorite recipes. To lower the glycemic index, add nuts to your pancakes, bran, bran to your muffins, or try a recipe for black bean brownies. Actually, they taste pretty good. I love adding oats to my yogurt. It, it changes the taste and the texture, and that also drops the GI. Tip 17, lastly and most importantly, consider the portion size. Yes, bananas and watermelon are on the high glycemic index list and carrots are there in the medium one, but come on, it's really difficult to overeat fruits and vegetables, so don't worry about them. I'm more concerned with the people that are eating an entire deli-sized bagel. Bagels, a high glycemic index, Index food is the equivalent of four to five slices of bread. Then again, have you noticed a lot of long distance bikers are eating bagels during their ride? Well again, why are they doing that? Because they want the quick acting carbs to again fuel their exercising cells. So again, sometimes there's a reason for it. So don't just consider what list the food is. Consider when you're eating it, how much you're eating of it. Jelly beans and mints, for example, are high GI, but if you're only eating one or two at a time, that's not going to spike your blood sugar. In fact, in the third video in this series, I'm going to introduce a new term, glycemic load. This takes into consideration both the glycemic index and the portion size. It'll help you understand why certain high glycemic index foods are just fine to eat. In fact, I'll show you how drinking soda, which is in the medium list, will actually spike, spike your blood glucose you know, higher than some of the high glycemic index foods. So there you go, 17 tips to help you to lower the glycemic index of the foods you eat. As you saw, low GI foods aren't necessarily healthier, and high glycemic index foods aren't off limits either. Until the third series, again, this is Dr. Joe, professional speaker and author of Reboot. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and pick up a copy of my book, Reboot.